Hi guys, I'm Alyssa from Daily Motor and today I'm going to show you the 2020 Nissan Kicks. This is the top of the line SR trim. You can get this for just over 26,000 and the base model actually comes at 20,000. So if you got a little bit of wiggle room with which one you want to get, if you want to spend a little bit more, go for the pricier option. It comes in this really beautiful metallic gray color that really shines and sparkles in the sunlight. The orange is like that too at the top. These are all season tires that we have on here. And if you can see, it's got a little bit of meat on it, which is nice for those bumpy, potholy city roads. This is a subcompact crossover, but all wheel drive is not available for any of the kicks. The fuel economy for this 2020 kicks is 31 in the city, 36 in the highway, and a whopping 33 on average. I think you guys are gonna get a kick out of this Nisa. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> All right, let's start by taking a look at the trunk. Let's see. So you do have your backup camera back here. And I, what trouble I had just now was pressing on the backup camera instead of actually pressing on the button here. So make sure you don't fog up your, your camera. So we have a lot of decent space right here. We have some grocery handle hooks here on this side and on the left. Um, we do have like this nice carpeted padding that can come right out. Underneath here, of course we have some tools. And uh, there's a tire in this. And a tire, look at that. The spare is right there. Nice. For an SUV, the load height actually is not that high. So if you have luggage that you need to put in the back here, you don't have to lift it up and move it in. It's very nice and low and just right, just right above my knee. So that's really comfortable. All right, let's take a look at the back seat. So I'm 5'1", so I'm not really gonna have trouble fitting into most cars, especially a subcompact SUV like this but i am sitting here i feel really comfortable the seat is pushed up quite a lot so it gives me a lot of leg room but overall i'm very comfortable in here now this middle seat does not have a cup holder that comes down um, so to replace that the each door has its own cup holder and i think that's a pretty good size for anything you could put like a giant hydro flask in there i would say you could put a tiny little plastic water bottle in there we do have two usb ports back here so if you're taking a road trip and you've got two kids in the back seat that have their electronics um, you're not going to have to worry about them running out of battery because they can charge it now let's see how easily these fold back it is pretty easy to pull on and look how far down the back of that seat goes it's pretty much parallel with the seat And then when you're done with it, pop it right back up, easily clicks right into place. No fiddling with it, no having to yank on this thing. It just goes up very easily. And right then and there, you've got extra space if you need it. And just like how the back of the trunk was quite low and easy to lift stuff into, this right here, it doesn't feel like I'm stepping into an SUV. It feels like I'm stepping into a sedan. And I'm not a tall person at all, so this is quite easy for me to just get in. There's no hopping I have to do. There's no jumping or anything. I'm in the seat and it was very easy. So if you're wearing like a dress or a skirt or if you've got nice pants on that you don't want to rip, you don't have to worry about that. And these seat adjustments are simple, manual, but they work. They're effective. So we've got the seat pumper right here. Just give that a nice pump and the seat will come up. We have the uh, back part adjuster right here, which is very simple. And to move the, move the seat forward, it's just this bar that goes across here. So it's simple, but I've adjusted everything to how I want my seat to be, and it's worked. And when I'm driving, I feel very comfortable. And here for the wheel, we have the standard tilt and telescope adjustments. It goes forward, back, of course, and up and down. Um, I would say it has a decent range. I typically like mine, let's see, I like it out and I like it up. So, and that's that's how I like it and that's very comfortable for me. At first glance, I looked at these little cup holders and I thought, actually, I think they're different sizes now that I look at it. 
so the one on the left side looks a tad bit smaller than the one on the right. And that was pretty much my first, I mean, I looked at these and I was like, wow, those look really small. But actually, I mean, this is like a standard, whatever, like, I almost called it a sippy cup, adult sippy cup, um, you know, water bottle, but it actually fits really well in this back one and it has some wiggle room and it's nice and tight in this other one. So they are slightly different sizes um, and they're the standard sizes, so you'd probably be able to fit anything. I actually am able to, I usually have my travel mug with coffee in it, or this is a substitute for today. I usually have that and a purse with me or a work bag, but this actually fits in this little area really quite nicely. And that's something I kind of look for when I'm in cars. Like, can I throw my crap in here and have it just sit here very, you know, easily without having to move it in the seat or move it in the back seat? And with this car, if I have to throw this in the back seat, my arms are not very long. So it's not really going to go very far and I might have some trouble trying to grab it. Having this, you know, little space right here is pretty convenient as well as having the, you know, this little itty bitty armrest and the button here. It's actually really nice because it's not, the button might be further back on other cars, but having it right here is easy enough. And then you've got some nice little space if you wanted to have sunglasses back here. For me, it is a bit of a stretch, but I do have my seat pushed up quite far because I am only 5'1". I would like to see more space in here. Um, I would like to see it go down a little bit deeper um, because if I'm parking somewhere and I'm gonna leave my wallet in my car, I wanna be able to like stow it away somewhere where it's hidden. We do have this extra space in here, so I could probably put more stuff in there. It will slide around though. It's quite, it's got like a hard plastic. Before I go to reverse, having this here is actually really handy. Being able to see, you know, if you're backing out of a driveway and there's like a telephone pole or like a light pole right back here, um, like my driveway, I was able to see where that was and that's always something I'm looking for because I always have to back out of my own driveway. You can see with the orange lines where you should go if you want to keep turning that way and going that way. I really like that it has a 360 display. Um, as well as like just the straight up view from the backup camera itself. But, and if you're backing into like a parking space, you can see where the yellow lines are and how badly you may have parked. So after I reverse, I'm gonna throw the car in park. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the camera button here. Hit it a little bit harder, okay. Shows up the standard um, reverse, you know, backup camera stuff. I'm gonna hit camera button again. And then here on the right side, you see if there was a curb here, it would show you, you know, how close you are or not close you are to the curb. And that would be really great for just everyday city driving, especially if you're wanting to park on the street. Um, and this is a subcompact SUV, so it's pretty much made for city driving. So this is a nice little added, added thing that they, they added to the backup camera here. It's only for the right side though, it's not for the left side. And I guess that's because they figure you can just kind of open your door and see how close you are to the curb. All right, let's take it for a drive. Okay, so it's got this nice handy uh, push to start that most cars have now. It's 2020, um, but nonetheless, it's very handy to have. Um, I noticed driving around this little parking lot here, trying to position the car for optimal sunlight and shading. Um, it was very easy to just whip it around in tight circles, uh, which will be really good for driving around very um, you know, tight city streets or getting into really narrow driveways where you really have to make a nice turn. So let's see if we can replicate that for you guys. Let's see. All right, I've got, I've got it turned all the way around. For an SUV, that's a nice little donut. This steering is really very light. Um, I, I feel like I could just steer one-handed like the whole way. It's very easy. I don't feel like I have to fight for grip. I don't feel like I have to, you know, put two hands on the wheels and really brace myself for turning. It's very easy. The gas and brake pedals are very responsive. Um, I don't have to, you know, really 
press on it or really have to give it any love for it to really listen to what it is I'm saying. We've got these really nice big all season tires on this. So it's handling the bumps and, and potholes in these nice Michigan roads really well. So the ride is really overall very smooth. I really do like how the gauge cluster is set up. there's not enough resistance which is what I would want going at these higher speeds. We do have blind spot monitoring here on this side as well as on the right side of the car. It does not have adaptive cruise control um, but the seats here are really comfortable for these what could be really long highway driving. All right everybody that was the 2020 Nissan Kicks. It is a great little subcompact SUV, perfect for winding down those narrow city streets. It comes in these super awesome metallic colors and it has really good gas mileage. Oh, and get this, it has There it is, it has remote start, awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'm Melissa from Daily Motor. We'll see you on the next one. Drive on.